Welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara O'Brien. The big news this week, former Lib Dem leadership candidate Mark Oaten was revealed to have had a six-month affair with a male prostitute. After the rent boy recognised him from seeing him on TV, Oaten denied it, saying, I must have a double. Curiously, the exact same words that did for Charles Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> the rent boy revealed that Oten asked him to dress up in a replica football kit, although he didn't reveal if Oten preferred two up front and one in the hole. <laughs> uh, we're definitely going to hell for that one. All right. Uh, a bottlenose whale swam up the Thames through central London. The whale faced a number of dangers from the strong current, from the low tide, and from passing the Japanese embassy where harpoonists were lined up on the roof. <laughs> Newspapers competed over what the whale should be called. The Sun called him Wally, the Mail called him Willie, the Mirror called him Whaley, and the Express called him an illegal immigrant coming over here, <laughs> stealing all of our plankton. <laughs> Elsewhere, the Russians accused the British of using a hollowed-out rock in a Moscow park to transmit coded messages. The British Secret Service has rubbish comparisons with James Bond. We're far more sophisticated than that, said a spokeswoman, Miss Kissy Shagminet. <laughs> the rock was hidden in the bushes, waiting to be picked up in the park by two men, as part of Operation Mark Open. <laughs> Joining me tonight to work their way through a series of satirical games are six of the country's leading comedy performers. John Oliver, Rory Bremner and Al Murray, Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and Jeannie Yashere. Welcome to you all. We start with a game called, if this is the answer, what is the question? On the board are six categories relating to current events. For each category, I read out an answer, and the players have to guess what the question might be. Al, would you like to choose the category? Yeah. Uh, environment, please. OK, your category is environment. The answer is tired, lost and confused. What is the question? How's Charles Kennedy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, statistically, what are the worst words to use on your CV? <laughs> <laughs> Is it name three acting expressions that Ross Kemp just can't manage? <laughs> <laughs> How does somebody over 40 feel when they're trying to download stuff from iTunes? <laughs> Is it the three dwarves that failed the audition? <laughs> You're on an adventure holiday in the wilds of the Amazonian jungle. <laughs> in the morning, you ask your guide how he is. What do you not want to hear? <laughs> <laughs> it is to do with the visitor to London. Oh, it's, it's, the whale. it's the whale. It's the whale, yes. Uh, the actual answer. I've no question. sympathy for this whale. It died of dehydration. <laughs> <laughs> in a river. They're supposed to be nearly as intelligent as man whales, and this whale died of dehydration. Well, to be fair, the whale didn't request being removed from the river. Uh, <laughs> the whale probably, if asked, if consulted at any stage about <laughs> what are the major health problems that you could face while being removed from the river. Dehydration, he probably would... About, the best thing about this whole whale business is that there's now no need to go to New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> Simply no need. You're 28 hours of connecting flights to look at whales. There's no point. They're in our river. <laughs> Do you know one of, the reason, one of the reasons I think it swam up the Thames was because the Navy were doing sonic uh, soundings and stuff off South End, and this apparently <laughs> confused the whale. Because it sounds like an explosion to us, but it, to the whale, it said diversion, naughty, close. <laughs> <laughs> Delays possible till November. I, <laughs> and it, I, I was very impressed with the fact that I spoke to a number of people who said, well, it all it received all the coverage because we in Britain uh, love animals. Ugh. And you kind of go, no, I think any country that had a whale would swim into the middle of the capital city would have probably gone, oh, a whale, that's a little bit unusual, uh, to ask. <laughs> I don't think there's any country in the world that's gone, oh, the bloody, like an urban fox or something. The bloody, <laughs> the bloody whales are at the bins again. <laughs> Jesus. Well, it, it was the same week, the whale came up the Thames, the same week as Ben Fogel and, what's it, <laughs> James Cracknell rowed across the Atlantic. And the whale was probably thinking, 
look, if they're going to take my territory, <laughs> I'm going to London and I'm going to present Cash in the Attic. <laughs> this week on Cash in the Attic. <laughs> well, yes, it was my mother's originally. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we're hoping to raise money for a holiday in Australia. <laughs> I think it was weird that they were thinking. One of the plans was to use whale song to lure the whale back out to sea. <laughs> But we don't know what the whale song means. We <laughs> have no idea. Any, any, anything by Dido will do. <laughs> As an emergency measure, they could have slowly moved Enya up the yeah. river from <laughs> Kingston. <laughs> <laughs> Play or I think you should do that anyway. Driving the whale. Let's do that anyway as a memorial to the whale's memory, Dara. Or let's let's make a memorial for the whale by putting it in the East Enders title sequence. <laughs> <laughs> Is it not very selective as well that they, they gave the whale a name? That it was called Wally or Whaley. What was the what was the mistake with the names? Well, because called... you would give it, you give a whale a name, but you don't. When a dingo has eaten some children in Australia, you don't say. <laughs> well, you don't. Davy to... the dingo. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you generally you give the name to anthropomorphise to give it to so, see that it reflects some great human qualities like bravery or getting whatever, lost. The whale. <laughs> yeah. But eating, <laughs> eating small children isn't really the kind of thing you want to have. <laughs> oh, little Teddy the dingo, you're all full of now, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, uh, the Sunday Times helpfully uh, ran a map of the whale's route, which we can show here. That's the whale, which is, you know, the river, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case you go, ah, yeah, no, if I was going to Battersea for me, Sunday, I wouldn't have gone that way. Yeah. <laughs> After the whale sadly died, some criticised the rescue operation. Let's face it, a whale needs to be winched onto the barge like it needs a hole in the head. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was sweet, that particular one. I thought, yeah, exactly. <laughs> to be fair, the whale only received the same treatment as any NHS patient, dying on the trolley 36 hours after first being seen. <laughs> the next dilemma is how to dispose of the body. The search is on for a toilet big enough to flush it down. <laughs> so I, couldn't, I couldn't do that. That's just... Bravo. <laughs> At the end of that round, I think the points have to go to Al, Rory and John. <laughs> this round is called Bombshell Phone Calls. Here, two players take on the identity of famous figures who are on the phone to one another. At some point in the conversation, one of them will drop a bombshell. Frankie, you are Russian President Vladimir Putin, calling Tony Blair, played by Rory, to discuss the growing tensions between their countries. Take it away. Hi, hello. Hello, Tony. <laughs> It's Vladimir Putin here. <laughs> Quite impressive. <laughs> Sorry, who? I think you know who it is, Tony, so hurry up. I Sorry. can't hold this accent forever. <laughs> you're, you're a bit faint. Could you actually talk into the rock? And I could hear you a bit clearer. <laughs> ah, yes, very funny, Blair. Don't think that we haven't had British society under surveillance for many years. What Big Ben is a, a radio aerial, Alton Towers is a Russian supercomputer, <laughs> and Chris Tarrant is an android that we placed in your society <laughs> to cheapen and degrade you. <laughs> oh, well, that one worked, didn't it? <laughs> yes, you know our, our Russian sense of irony, Tony? Yeah. Well, for many years, both of David Blunkett's eyes were cameras. <laughs> I mean, that's useless. You'll just have, you know, miles of useless footage of bedroom interiors. Nonsense! <laughs> Russia now leads the world in gonzo pornography. <laughs> Although we do have a surveillance device in England. It's your son, Leo. What? And we're now having him kidnapped by Fathers for Justice, where he will be raised as Robin. <laughs> He will, then, he will then be brainwashed into thinking that Cherie Blair is the Joker <laughs> by showing him pictures of Cherie. <laughs> right, well, well, two can play at that game, Vladimir. All right, yeah, we're not paying our gas bill, we're going on direct debit and we're going nuclear, right? <laughs> 
Well, I think we've covered everything, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't heard the last of this. Yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> Both of them brilliant, but for his uncanny impersonation of the president of Transylvania, I have to give him right <laughs> to Frankie. <laughs> now we play a round called Spinning the News. This game involves John, Frankie, Gina, and Al. So if you could make your way over to the performance area, please. This is a stand up right. challenge. Our random news generator contains a bank of newsworthy topics. We spin the wheel. When it's up, anyone can step forward and try to make us laugh about the subject it's landed on. If I judge the player's got a big enough laugh, he or she is safe and gets to sit down again. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel for the first topic. <laughs> first subject is the ageing population. John. Shame on you for laughing at just their faces. <laughs> Michael Howard, at the last election, said that you can tell a lot about a country by how it treats its old people. But I've always found that you can tell more about a country from guidebooks and first-hand experience. Because <laughs> last summer I went on holiday to Italy and I spent the whole time looking at old people and, in hindsight, I wish I'd visited the Leading Tower of Pisa. <laughs> I've heard that Italian food was the best in the world, but as far as I could see, it was just bowls of mashed-up apple. <laughs> <laughs> well done, John. You can sit down. OK, let's spin the wheel again. The subject is Tony Blair's respect agenda. Who wants to come in on that? Gina. OK, so now Tony Blair's government is now clamping down on loutish behaviour while at the same time trying to ban parents from smacking their kids. <laughs> A little bit, something wrong with that. I, I, you know, I'm from a Nigerian background and when I was a kid, I used to... I used to feel jealous of my white friends because they could shout at their mums. I remember going to my mate's house when I was a kid and her mum coming in and telling her to go to bed and she was like that, shut up! <laughs> Get out of my room, you old trap! <laughs> I'll go to bed when I want! <laughs> and then her mum leaving the room and then me going home to my Nigerian mum doing the same thing. My mum comes in, Gina, time for you to go to bed. I was like, shut up! <laughs> I was in a coma for six months. <laughs> Get it back down. Okay, Al and Frankie are left. It's a tiebreak situation. We'll pick one topic and you can both speak on it. Let's spin the wheel. The topic is living with terror. Al, do you want to go first? <laughs> <laughs> we are very lucky in the war on terror to have the Americans standing shoulder to shoulder with us. <laughs> shoulder to shoulder. <laughs> with us in the war on terror, because they've done their bit to help this country in the war on terror, because if the Americans hadn't funded the IRA for 35 years, we wouldn't have the faintest idea how to deal with terrorists, would we? <laughs> the main thing is the clueless. <laughs> to try and solve the terror thing, the Americans, what they've done, they've gone to Afghanistan to try and find bin Laden. They're looking for a man with a beard <laughs> in a country where you have to have a beard. <laughs> It's a needle in a haystack, isn't it? It's a slapper in Essex. You know she's there. <laughs> Which one is she? Thank you very much, Alan Murray. Right. Sit back there, Mike. Yeah, come on. Frankie, it's your turn. Well, you know we've got this thing now, extreme rendition, where basically they fly people out to torture them, and those flights stop in Scotland. <laughs> I mean, this is horrendous. People being denied basic human rights, orange jumpsuits. How are we supposed to tell these flights apart from EasyJet? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, EasyJet probably would torture you. They'd just charge you for it as an extra. <laughs> you want a sack on your head and pissed on, sir? That'll be six euros. <laughs> Is this, is this really what we want to do with Islamic fundamentalist terrorists? Make sure they're all on planes. <laughs> Isn't that a bit like when they used to lock the A-team into a shed full of old mechanical parts? <laughs> well done, Frankie, there. I think the winner of that round is going to be Al. The next game is Headliners. I show the teams a recent photo along with the initial letters of a newspaper headline. They then have to tell me what the letters stand for. Here's a picture of the Liberal Democrat leadership candidates. So what does LDLC stand for? 
Liberal Democrats love cock. <laughs> 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 to, to be honest, Dara, they haven't done themselves any favours by coming on to the YMCA there. <laughs> <laughs> is it, is it going, from, going from left to right? It's loser, deviant, lefty and codger. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it the annual Liberal Democrat line dancing challenge? <laughs> <laughs> Lake Developers Learning Circle? I'll give it to you. The first two letters do stand for Lib Dems. <laughs> Lib Dems, Dems loose cannons. Uh, Lack charisma. <laughs> Not a million miles off. Like Love crisps. <laughs> 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 a liberal snack. Crisps and crack, obviously. Liberal Democrats. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the second letter is leadership. Leadership. Leadership chaos. crap. I don't know what. Yeah. <laughs> liberal Democrat leadership contest. <laughs> The answer I was looking for is Liberal Democrat Leadership Crisis. Ah. Oh. Uh, oh, OK. No. Yeah, crisis. No. I, I, frankly, I gave you three of the four words. <laughs> <laughs> and I also said it was about things yeah. not going well. How many C words are there? And don't give me any <laughs> suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> to be unfair on Mark Hogan, he, 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 he thought he had a perfect alibi, because he thought, I'm a Liberal Democrat, no-one will know who I am. <laughs> The Liberals are surprisingly liberal, Rory, I would have said. <laughs> I'd love to go to their party conference. It must be like Freddie Mercury's Halloween party. <laughs> Ming's feeling horny. Grease up another baboon. <laughs> <laughs> to, to, to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if they elected Pete Doherty as leader now. <laughs> Mark Oaten, of course, is the, uh, or was, the Liberal Democrats' home affairs Spokesman, wasn't it? Do you think he just misunderstood his responsibility? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, he thought he had to do it. When the, when the crisis broke, his wife was on a skiing holiday. And it's ironic, isn't it? Because she's going down a slippery slope with a pole in each hand. <laughs> <laughs> not realising he's doing exactly the same. Apparently, he was into humiliation, Mark Houghton. Well, so he, must have, he must have loved general election night. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there goes another key marginal. <laughs> Ironically, he was regarded as a very safe seat. <laughs> this sort of highlights the hypocrisy of the Liberal Democrats, though, isn't it? I mean, say what you like about Charles Kennedy, he would have had to have got pretty drunk to have shagged a guy. <laughs> I, mean, I, I think it would have been great to have Charles Kennedy as Prime Minister, a drunk Prime Minister. It'd be great to see, like, Trevor MacDonald on News at 10 finishing an item by going... The Prime Minister's meeting with Kofi Annan, which ended in a scuffle. <laughs> <laughs> How did Oaten describe the incident? Pleasurable. <laughs> well worth 80 quid. <laughs> it actually was an error of judgement. I think that's fair, isn't it? Yeah, probably, to be honest. <laughs> uh, on Mark Oaten's website, he states that his policy is not to tolerate prostitution, but to move it to a specified area. <laughs> technically known as Round My Place. <laughs> Before the story broke, Mark Oden wrote on his website, I'm looking forward to a quiet weekend with my family. And sure enough, his wife hasn't spoken to him in four days. <laughs> the winners of that round are Frankie, Hugh and Gina. <laughs> this next round is our version of Question Time called Ask the Politicians. I'll play the host. John and Frankie, you're members of the audience. Ask them the questions, if you could please make your way up there. And the rest of you will make up the panel. Rory, you're David Blunkett. Hugh, you're a spokesman for the Conservative Party. Al, you're the voice of the silent majority. Gina, you're going to be a South London councillor. And may we have our first question from uh, the... Yes, the man in the glasses there. Thank you. What does the panel think that we should do about bird flu? <laughs> Mr Blunkett? <clears throat> uh, uh, right, well... Uh... <laughs> 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 I, I, I caught <laughs> flu from an American bird once, and uh, <laughs> I had to have a put down. But uh, I, I think we have to stop birds coming into the country. Uh, uh, it's like the whale. I think we've turned into a soft touch for all mammals and avian <laughs> creatures. I, I think they come here expecting to be treated on the NHM, the Natural History Museum. Uh, <laughs> We, we should, we should <laughs> kick him out. Hugh, <laughs> 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 surely... 
Over here. How am I going to do that? Surely the Conservatives don't, can't possibly agree with this. So this is a, this is a very modern disease. Um, avian flu H5N1. It, it even has its own postcode. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, as speaking as the voice of the silent majority of a decent, honest, hard-working, normal, law-abiding, tax-paying, reasonable people of Great Britain who think anyone who wants to work with children be strung up just in case. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think... Yeah. We have spoken. I think, I mean, I think the only thing to do is kill all birds. <laughs> I mean, the symptoms are obvious. You spot my mouth. Achoo! Achoo! Yeah. And... I mean, but I think we need to kill all... It's like the foot and mouth. We had to kill those sheep and cows so that they didn't die. It's essentially that. <laughs> I need to kill all birds. They must die. You know, but the thing is, this disease can't be that hard to spot. You know, you must be pretty stupid to let a chicken cough on you. It's not just the sick ones. It, it's also uh, the, the worried well. <laughs> We're going to move to another question now, to the gentleman over there. Do the panel think that what you do in your private life affects how well you do your job as a politician? I, I think we have to give this straight to uh, Mr Bunker there. Uh, I, I think... I, I, I think it's... Dirty bastard. <coughs> <laughs> Please, let the man speak, then call him a dirty <coughs> bastard. Uh... I think it works the other way around. My private life's been a lot better since I've been a politician. Uh, <laughs> ever since I've been a minister, you wouldn't believe the totty that it brought me. <laughs> So, I, I, I'm, I'm relieved. But what you don't know is that you've been sleeping with a moose. <laughs> uh, speaking on behalf of the Conservatives, as an MP yourself, well, I think, are, I you, think are you drowning in Poonani at the moment? <laughs> <laughs> well, I do certainly drink that particular well, yes. <laughs> so, do, should we bring politicians to a higher moral standard than, than other of people? Of course, yeah. politicians should not even be having sex. When you're married, all that stuff is supposed to stop. <laughs> OK. <laughs> we have one final question from the gentleman there. Uh, who are the panel's modern-day heroes? Well, I'm from the, the new, caring, considerate Conservative Party, so... Pol Pot. <laughs> um, Mussolini. Oswald Mosley. People whose politics was really very in the centre uh, would be my heroes. <laughs> Bill Oddie. <laughs> Tark of the Otter. <laughs> I can't go into why. <laughs> Trisha! <laughs> yeah, you see, this is it. Uh, there aren't any heroes anymore, that's the problem. In the old days, chock a block, you, had, you bumped into heroes wherever you went. There aren't any heroes. We proper heroes like Nelson. Yeah? One arm, one eye. Still up on it. <laughs> Defeat, <laughs> defeat the French and Spanish navies at Trafalgar, literally single-handedly. You can't argue that, can you? <laughs> <laughs> Not only that, yeah. that, he couldn't even tell how far away they were, could he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and when the battle ended, he wasn't on the phone, was he, to blame direct? <laughs> oh, I lost my arm in the battle, and the, and the navy should have warned me that a battle was a dangerous situation to be in. <laughs> So I want two grand for the arm, I lost an eye, I want fifteen hundred quid for the eye. I'm traumatised, I've got Napoleonic War Syndrome. No. <laughs> <laughs> Douglas Bard had no legs got in that plane, didn't he? Yeah, he couldn't work the rudder, so they had to point it in the general direction of Germany. <laughs> 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 uh, it's a toss-up, Nybevan or Lassie. <laughs> Can I just say that you are looking remarkably like Benny Hill? <laughs> 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 uh, I don't think everyone's on the panel tonight, but I think the points have to go because he articulated the words of, of everyone, really, to Al on that particular <laughs> round. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, and John, come back down here. <laughs> now we come to our final quickfire round called Scenes We'd Like to See. This is for everyone, so if you can make your way over to the performance area, please. I call out ideas for scenarios we'd love to see, and the performers come in with their suggestions. OK. Here we go. The first subject is cliffhanger lines from a political soap opera. <laughs> I'm John F. Kennedy. I've been in the shower. Did I miss anything? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Connelisa. 
I think I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> the irony won't be lost on you here, President Schwarzenegger. I'm from the future, and I'm here to stop you from destroying the world. <laughs> We've had drunkards, we've had rent boys. What could be worse? What have you done? Shagged a goat addicted to heroin? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I missed your vote on sustainable agriculture. I'm afraid I was busy sleeping with your wife. <laughs> <laughs> Are you trying to seduce me, Lady Thatcher? <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you say, George? Just you and me and Brokeback Mountain. <laughs> ah. Ah. <laughs> the next topic is things George Galloway would never say. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> I can't wear that. That looks stupid. <laughs> I'm very famous in the Muslim world. For being an ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, enough about me. How was your day? <laughs> oh, thank you very much indeed, Saddam. Would you like a receipt? <laughs> Next topic, please. Words you'd never hear from a newsreader. Welcome to Channel 5 News, Thekos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oi. Do you want to buy some speakers? <laughs> <laughs> Too revolting to describe. But let's have a go anyway. <laughs> Basically... <laughs> the two youths convicted this morning got what they f deserved. <laughs> Okay, they may have acquitted him, but he certainly looked like a paedophile. <laughs> you've been watching Sky News. To be honest, I've double checked everything you've just heard. <laughs> <laughs> Sir Gary Glitter received his honour at the palace this morning. <laughs> Welcome to ITV News on ice. <laughs> That's <pretty> unlikely. <laughs> The next report may contain images that could give you the horn. <laughs> In this next report, Jerry Adams is voiced by an actor, Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> I'll tell you about the priest process, mother. <laughs> then we we'll leave it at that, ladies and gentlemen. Well done to all the people. Give it a say, Frankie. Oh, John, let's give it a Frankie of the best there. Sit down. That's the end of the show. This week's winners are Frankie Boy, Hugh Dennis, and Gene Yeshere. <laughs> Commiserations to Al Murray, Roy Thunder, and John Oliver. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next week. Good night.